mid-19th century and Barcelona has been building within its wall for 150 years. The walls are being destroyed and the now renowned father of urbanism is leading an effort to build outside of these walls in a more thoughtful manner, reserving outdoor space for its citizens. And that is where Barcelona starts. This game is steeped heavily in a thematic history and the designer really thoughtfully created mechanics that nest within that history. But that's not what got me interested in this game. What really got me into this game is all the hype during Gen Con and it being on the hotness. So when I saw this in my local game store, I grabbed it immediately. Actually, let me back up. I grabbed it immediately, took a look at it. I knew I was gonna get it, but I wanted to keep my hands free for other things. So I put it down and I walked around. I turn around and my wife has it in her hand. She's looking at the back and she's like, this looks like one of your games. And I was like, actually, honey, <laughs> It's coming home with us. It, it it absolutely is one of my games. This game at its core is a worker placement game. It does it a little bit differently than most, which makes it really interesting. There's also elements of tile placement, city building, bonuses, combos, all of that fun stuff. And that's just scratching the surface on what this game does. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that. We're gonna go over mechanics, what makes them unique. We're gonna talk a little bit about where the fun is in this game. And spoiler alert, there is a lot of it. We're also gonna talk a little bit about components and I'm going to give pros and cons, final thoughts, all of that fun stuff. So first and foremost, let's figure out what this game's doing. So let's dive deep into the mechanics. The first and most prevalent mechanic is worker placement. We'd mentioned that we are building the city out. And as you look at the main board, you can't help but to see this city in a nice, neat grid. You're drawing two citizens from a bag. You're stacking those citizens on top of each other, placing them on an intersection and activating all of the actions that are in line with the horizontal, vertical. There's also a diagonal axis that will activate a third action. But the complexity comes in once we start to define all of these actions. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do my best to keep it brief. I do wanna point out the really interesting kind of meta games that are happening within the larger game here. And these two actions here are the most basic. You either gain two coins or gain a cloth and three points. Coins and cloths are used throughout the game to pay for upgrades, pay for end game gold tiles, all of these other things that we're gonna go through. But just know that's a really simple action. These next two actions all deal with this row on the sideboard. You either take one of these modernisme, modernisme, you take, <laughs> they're essentially gold tiles, but they're called modernisme tile actions. I'm definitely butchering that pronunciation. So when you take one of these tiles, pretty simply, you can put it on your board. You'll see some of these spots here do have a cost associated, either coins, cloth, or a combination of both. And once you play them, this is an in-game goal for you. This is probably one of the first things to pay attention to in this game and why I'm mentioning it first, because this will set the tone on what you're going for for the rest of the game. These will be scored at the end of the game, and when I play, very much drive kind of where I'm going with my game. The second related action is essentially upgrading one of these modern modernisme. Once of the... <laughs> It's essentially upgrading one of these gold tiles to a higher multiplier. So now these are starting to look even better. You have this goal and now you're upgrading the multiplier on top of it. So, you know, do the math. <laughs> these can be some really big point sources, especially if you've gotten a lot of them. So now we've kind of moved over to this sideboard. So let's flush out the rest of it with some other actions. With this action, you can build a public service. And this pretty simply gives you extra points, it allows you to go up on this Serta track on the right hand side. We're going to talk a little bit about what that track does when we get to building buildings. So let's put a pin in that for now. And then it essentially gives you a super action. Every one of these tiles is connected to another action you take out on the board, but it gives it a little bit of a boost. These do cost a variable amount of coins depending on where you are in each stack. But once again, really powerful. Then there's this cobblestone action here. Pretty simply take the cobblestone that's on your player board and place it on the sidewalk. When you place it on the sidewalk, it has to be adjacent to another one of these tiles and you pretty simply just gain the bonus. On top of that, you're uncovering spots on your player board and those spots are used to store goods. Being able to store more goods is obviously better, but it also uncovers a point value that the highest of which you get at the end of the game. So this action is part of a theme in this game, which is multi-purpose actions. When you take this action, it, it certainly feels great to place it on the sidewalk board and get the bonus, but then you're also opening up an extra spot for some more goods and you're getting the end game points. So part of the theme of this game is all the actions or most of your turns, I should say, feel really good. So now we've gone through how to get some bonuses and extra points. Let's dive a little bit deeper into how we're going to build our city. 
The next is intersections. These intersections are on your board. You simply take one of these intersections, pay the associated cost if applicable, and place it on an open intersection on the board. It really can be any one. If there's a cost under the intersection, you also have to pay that too. So when you do place these, you get any of the bonuses printed on the surrounding streets that are still uncovered. The really interesting part about these intersections is anytime a citizen is placed for an action, you get stuff. Depending how many of these intersections you built will determine how many bonuses and what you can get. If you build enough, you can choose multiple things. The decision as to where you place these is a really interesting one because you're trying to think a little bit about what's the other player's goals that they're going for, what are the actions that they're going to want to take multiple times. If you get these built early, they could really pay dividends in the end. Heck, you can also be thinking about the actions that you want to take personally, because every time you play citizens on there, you also get the bonuses. A really great way to be able to stack coins and cloth and, and even a couple points here and there. And these two actions are building streets. You either build two narrow or one wide. The cool thing about streets is every time you place one, you count points for every street that's in that same line. So in this scenario where we already have three wide streets built, we're gonna place a fourth and we're not just counting the two points associated with the tile that we laid, we're counting two points times four because it's basically allowing you to recount every single tile. So there's also an interesting metagame going here. Do you wanna be the first person to play streets or do you wanna play off somebody else's and really multiply the amount of points that you can get when you're placing those tiles? One other note is you gain the icon that you're placing on top of. So that's also part of the strategy here. If you really need some coins, you're gonna to wanna to place it on the two coins. However, is that gonna give you the right positioning to to be able to count multiple streets in your score. All right, so let's talk about the tram now. So there's this tram action on the diagonal. Any of the spaces that you place your citizens on on the diagonal will not only give you the actions on the vertical and horizontal axis, it also gives you a tram action. The first time you use this action, you pretty simply just place the tram on any street position that you'd like. In subsequent actions, you either move your tram one or two spots. One little side note is any streets you've built do not count as a movement. So the more streets that you have, the more flexibility you're going to have to move your tram. So why the heck do you want to move your tram? Well, you can pay the cost associated to these cubes here, and these are your passengers. And you're going to drop these passengers off on any street that you landed on that doesn't already have a citizen on it. When you do, you get to activate the action that's associated with that street. So basically, you're just taking a third free action here. The one side note is if there's already a street tile there, that street tile is scored as if it were just placed. So if you're placing it on your street tile, you get the points. If it's another player's street tile, they get the points. So that's a little bit of a consideration, but the benefit definitely can outweigh the cost here because if you're playing strategically, you can get some really powerful actions essentially for free. This is one where you're starting to think a little more strategically. In my mind, if you're playing with a tram strategy, essentially, you're trying to activate it a lot. There's definitely a lot more to consider. I believe your turns are a little heavier and a little more AP prone, but definitely worth it. I really love this mechanic. And the last action is pretty simply the aforementioned Seda track off here to the right. You get to go up two spots. All right, so now we're at the last part of your turn. You've placed your citizens on the board and now it's time to assess whether you can build a building or not. If you can, it's mandatory. They have to be built no matter what, but you're gonna to wanna to build them. That's a big point source for you. So basically what you're assessing is the citizens that are adjacent to the block. So if there's at least two adjacent to one block, Typically you can build a building. There's four different buildings, all have variable costs. Some of them want specific class citizens to be able to be built, and that's shown on the building tile. When you build these buildings, you get the bonuses printed on the building, which are going up or down on the Serda track, which I promise we're almost there. I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to explain that track. Or going up on the Sagrada Familia track. I hope I said that right. <laughs> So we're going to take a little side quest to our player board so I can describe that track. When you cross this gap here, you get to take one of these tiles, take the bonuses. You can get some really major rewards and points with these things. So building buildings and going down on that Serda track might be worth it when you're at level four taking an 18 point tile. So after you've resolved those bonuses, now you take the citizens that were essentially paid to build the building or moved into that building and you place them down here on the citizen track. This is a really interesting track because as you place them, it's going to determine how many points you get for said building. Because when you build the building and you place these citizens, the lowest point value that's visible are the points that you take. Now we go back to the citizens that are stacked when you place them. Depending on what you're stacking on top or bottom, strategically, you might be looking at this track, trying to cover up these lower point values so you can get higher values and points. We've definitely had games where, say, the entire pink track is almost filled and we'd barely touch green or blue. It's really variable by game. Game. If it's more of an even build, then you're going to end up scoring a lot more points in the end because many of the buildings are being built with higher points. And now we're finally to that Serda track on the right hand side that I've been talking about. 
which is actually really, really important. You see, as these citizens are stacked up, they're going to cross these thresholds. And once any one of them meets or crosses the threshold, it triggers a mid-game scoring. There's these three tiles at the top here, and they're essentially goals for everybody. They also help to drive a little bit of tension in the game because you know those are all about to be scored and each player are gonna be able to score them. On top of that, you score them times the multiplier that you've reached on that Serta track. So if you're at a multiplier of four, you can imagine that's going to be huge. And there's some calculus going on there when you're placing buildings, not wanting to go backwards on that track and getting below that four or even three times threshold right before you're about to go into a scoring. Another really brilliant mechanism going on in this game. So now we're gonna go into components real quick. They're not great. The art is bright and vibrant and inviting, so that's a big plus, but they're all pretty basic cardboard, tons of punching there's some wood bits that are that are fine but all of it slides around on the single layer boards it's kind of a big pain to set up and take down because everything's in plastic baggies there's no insert whatsoever and frankly this is the type of game that i absolutely will have an insert this setup would be greatly aided if this game came out in a deluxe edition with dual layer boards so my stuff isn't sliding all over the player board i'd even make that citizen track dual layer acrylic chips for citizen Citizens, acrylic tiles across the board I would buy that immediately and I'm gonna call that right now they're going to eventually come out with this because spoiler alert I think this is a fantastic game what a perfect segue into my pros and cons so the first pro is the worker placement mechanism where it's an activation on a grid you're activating two actions at minimum possibly a third with that tram it feels great you're not just thinking about a couple different places to place your worker, you're thinking about an entire grid to get those citizens down. You're not only thinking about the actions that you wanna take, but also the order in which you take them that could absolutely affect whether you can take the second or third action. My next pro is nearly everything is multi-purpose. Like the cobblestone action, you get a good or a bonus just for placing the tile. You're also uncovering in-game scoring points and you're freeing up space to be able to hold more goods. This leads to every turn feeling rewarding. My next pro is that on the surface, the teach of this game is really simple. The turn structure is you're literally doing one thing. You're just placing a worker. So cons, rules overhead on all the actions is a little steep. There's there's quite a bit to figure out there. And a lot of cases are interacting with each other. There's little nitpicky rules here and there on these actions that you're just gonna have to know. We screwed a lot of them up the first few times. We kind of almost have learned a nuance to a rule that we'd been doing wrong every single play. Due to the lack of insert setup on this game can take a little bit. I mean, it probably takes me 10 or so minutes to, to get this set up, maybe more. And the last and only other con are the components kind of leave a lot to be desired. You know, we already talked about them. I can definitely look past it. And segueing to final thoughts there, Euro worker placement crunchy games are definitely at the top of my list because that's what my game group likes. My wife, <laughs> I love them as well. So they hit the table a lot. So I can never really feel like I have too many worker placement games. However, this one's doing worker placement in a totally new way. The multitude of actions associated and kind of nesting within action, these kind of combo-tastic turns that happen lead to dopamine hits and feel-good moments all throughout the game. It's one of those games that I don't really care that I'm losing. It feels good to be playing the puzzle. With that said, there is plenty of player interaction. You know, there's blocking going on. Uh, whether it be from roads and intersections or just the citizen placement or racing to get certain buildings built for whatever reason there's lots of goals that will that will affect kind of where those tensions come in at so it's not just a solitary puzzle that many euros end up being i feel like the game is constantly changing each and every time we play because of what the other player is doing if you like crunchy euros you play lots of worker placement and you're looking for something new a new slant on the genre this is definitely it. So the designer, Danny Garcia, my hat is off to you. Board and Dice, another gem here. I know this is going to be a staple in my collection for years to come. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. This channel's in its infancy. I have a ton of plans. I'm pumping out a ton of content. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. And on that note, I'm out.